Hello, and welcome to another video on dynamic algorithms. Today I want to discuss a topic called dynamic transitive closure of directed graphs. And today I only want to talk about acyclic graphs to reduce our problem. In the next video, I will expand this problem to include cycles, which should make this a bit more complex. So, just to review what a directed graph is. We have some graph with n nodes and m edges, which is at most n squared, which would be the case if every node was connected to each other. So initially we have some graph with no edges and n nodes. So which operations would we like to support? Well, we have insert to su insert some edge between two nodes. If there is an edge, we may delete it. And our query we have to answer is u and v connected? Meaning is there a path from u to v? So of course we have our standard lazy and eager methods we can start out from. So if you recall from your algorithm and data structure courses, we can calculate transitive closure measure from an adjacency matrix using floyd warshall algorithm in order n cube time. In recap of what floyd warshalls algorithm is all about, we compute the adjacency matrix A. Every instance in our matrix is a value either 0 or 1. 1 if there exists a path of length 1 from i to j in our graph G. The transitive closure graph is then computed as the matrix with the entrances being a value either of 0 or 1. 1 if there exists a path of any length from i to j in our graph G. But actually, in the eager case, we can do much better for our insert. Because if we insert, we actually only have to check order n squared nodes to check if the path has been created. This is because we never destroy any path. So the abstraction is that after an insert from u to v, a path from i to j might be created if and only if there already exists a path from i to u and from v to j written as TIU and TVJ, then TIJ equals 1. This will give us order n squared execution time for our insert. The issue is to reduce the leads execution time from order n cubed, since we don't know if there exist multiple paths between the two edges we just deleted. So we have to come up with something a lot smarter. When we treat our graph as an arithmetic problem, we can actually do something really brilliant things. We state that the ij's entry of the matrix A times A is the sum from k equals 1 up to n of aik times akj. Now what does this actually mean? Well, it's the number of paths of length 2 from i to j. For the case of a cubed, this is written out as a times a times a. The ij's entry is calculated as the sum of k equals 1 to n of the sum of l equals 1 to n of a i k times a k l times a l j. So this will be the number of paths of length 3 from i to j. The max path length in an acyclic graph is at most less than or equal to n minus 1. So a to the power of n is equal to 0 because we can't have n plus 1 vertices in an nth length graph because that would mean a cycle which we don't allow. But a to the power of n would be the number of paths from i to j. Given that this would be i plus a plus a squared up to a to the power of n minus 1, i being the identity matrix, would give us the number of paths from i to j. So to reduce this, we take this as i minus j times i plus a plus a squared up to a to the power of n minus 1 equals to i minus a to the power of n equals to i. So to compute this would be to say i plus a plus a squared up to a to the power of n minus 1 minus 
a plus a squared up to a to the power of n minus 1 plus a to the power of n. So, a to the power of n equals i minus a to the power of minus 1, or the inverse, on the entry ij, which will compute the number of paths from i to j. So, this gives us a theorem to prove. We state that there exists a path of any length from i to j in G, which is a cycle of if and only if i minus a inverse on the entry ij is not zero. If we can prove this, we can actually do deletion in order n squared, which would be pretty great. So to do this, we need to show that we can do dynamic matrix inverse in order n squared, which have bound our algorithm. So we'll take a look at rank 1 update, which is used on our input a, which is a n times n matrix, and our output will be the inverse n times n matrix. This is written as a plus uv transposed. So uv transpose is the column vector u and v, both n times 1. We transpose v to get a row vector of 1 times n. So this results in an n times n matrix. The a i j is then calculated as a i j plus some delta. The notation of u v transpose is also here called the out product. We now use Sherman Morrison's formula to do the inverse calculations in a numerically cheap way. Why this is cheap is because the inverse of a plus u v transpose does not have to be recomputed from scratch, but we can compute it by just correcting A inverse. A quick idea about what we actually want to do is use unit columns for U or V so we can manipulate the individual columns or row of A. When we want to express the time complexity, we have to do 3 times n squared scalar multiplications for the whole matrix when updated. If u or v is a unit column, the computation only takes 2 times n squared. If v and u is a unit column, the computation only takes n squared multiplication, giving us order n squared time. So what we have to do now is just prove Sherman Morrison is able to delete in order n squared time. This proof is just done by calculation. So here is the expansion of calculations. The only thing to note about this is that it's only possible because of the v transposed a inverse times u is at 1 by 1, meaning a single value we can move around. That's another proof of this Sherman Morrison, which you can read on the research paper from 1949 and 1950. To go a little bit out of scope, we can actually apply what we have learned in the last video about global rebuilding to reduce the time to order n to the power of 1.495. But we would have to sacrifice the constant query time, which in some cases would be the optimal way to go. This is a much more complex idea which I am not going to get into. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to me for future videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, please email me at miniwolf at cs.au.dk, that is miniwolf at cs.au.dk.